thing. It's day 20, so you've only got 23,506 verses to go. We start off in 1 Samuel 3 with God promising to give everybody really tingly ears. And God says to the little boy Samuel that he has to tell the older priest Eli that his son's gonna die because they're being super bad. Tough gig for your first message from God. The Ark of the Covenant gets stolen by the Philistines, which is a huge deal because the Ark of the Covenant is this snazzy box that they made back in Exodus that God lives in. God doesn't like being carried around willy-nilly, so he punishes them with tumours of the groin. That's actually crazy because that's the low blow they were warned about on day 15. Check out Deuteronomy 33 11. The Philistines try and find out what to do and they say sorry to God by sending back the ark with golden rats and golden groin tumours. Where did they get the moulds from? Samuel leads Israel beautifully for 20 years and he defeats the Philistines but the Israelites still ask for a king. God takes this quite personally because he's supposed to be their king and he warns them about all the ways that a king will oppress them if they set one up. But they say we don't care. We want a king. Give us a real one. And effectively they're saying all the cool kids have got kings, give us one. So God points out a guy called Saul who's brilliant because he's taller than everybody else and he loses donkeys and he hides in suitcases when he gets scared. Yeah, that last bit's not a joke. To be fair, he does manage to save a load of Israelites from having their right eyes gouged out by the Ammonites, so, you know, brownie points. Meanwhile, his son Jonathan attacks the Philistines pretty much on his own and inspires the whole army to win this big battle. But Saul has made up this rule saying if anybody eats while we're at war, they're gonna have to die. I mean, that is crazy. I can barely go without a bourbon for more than five minutes when I'm sat at home doing nothing. That rule nearly gets his own son killed for eating a tiny little bit of honey, so his leadership is looking a little bit shaky right now. God then sends Saul to completely destroy the Amalekites, but Saul sees fit to kill everything that's really weak and keep all the good stuff for himself while claiming he's gonna give it all to God. Because of this, God takes the kingdom away from him and decides to find a new king. Tune in tomorrow for a nine-foot giant and a seriously bad game of royal cat and mouse.